If you're looking to build an aesthetic physique that commands attention, you must focus on developing key muscles that not only make you stronger, but also make you look bigger and more muscular. In this video, I'll show you 5 exercises that'll help you achieve a jack, muscular look by focusing on muscle groups that make the biggest visual impact. So, watch the video till the end, it'll be interesting. Number 1. Deadlift. When we talk about the king of all compound exercises, the deadlift comes at first place. The deadlift trains the hamstrings, glutes, lower middle upper back, upper traps, forearms, and core. Another massive benefit of the deadlift is its natural movement compared to the squat or bench press. There is also a wide variety of deadlift variations to choose from that target different muscle groups to varying degrees. But if we were to choose one variation that would add to the long list of muscle groups trained in the deadlift, it would be the sumo deadlift. We decided on this deadlift variation because of its great involvement of the quadriceps. And since squats are not on this list, this is the perfect variation. This 2002 study compared the conventional and sumo deadlift. During the sumo deadlift, muscle activation was greater compared to the conventional deadlift in vastus medialis and vastus lateralis, which are two of the four muscle groups in the quadriceps. The reason quad activation is higher is the wider stance and the more upright back position. Variations like the Romanian deadlift and stiff leg deadlift further activate the hamstrings. The trap bar deadlift is another great variation similar to the sumo deadlift because we are able to get more upright. Have deadlifts as part of your arsenal and your physique will thank you for it. Number 2. Incline Bench Press. The next exercise on our list is the incline bench press. While most people are strong with a flat or decline bench press, the press done with a slight incline further engages the upper chest. A well-built upper chest has a greater impact on the appearance of the chest than just having a large lower chest. The upper chest, technically known as the clavicular head, is a small muscle below the collarbone that consists of descending muscle fibers. Pressing at an incline increases muscle activation in this area. So the question is, what's the best incline angle to use that will build the upper chest while still activating the rest of the chest? A study on 15 male subjects compared the bench press angles at 30, 45, and 60 degree incline. They found that a 44 degree bench produced greater muscle activation than at the 28 degree angle in the upper chest. A second study found similar upper chest activation with the 30 and 45 degree angles, with the third 2020 study finding greater upper muscle activation with a 30 degree angle. Based on these studies, we recommend using a 30 degree incline press for your chest pressing. Number 3. Pull-ups. The third exercise is the pull-up, and much like the deadlift, many variations can be used. For those who aren't able to perform strict bodyweight pull-ups, they can use a machine or cable pull-down instead. But first, let's look at how different variations affect back and bicep muscle activation. Over a full repetition, the pronated grip where your palms face forward resulted in significantly greater muscle activation of the middle trapezius when compared to the neutral grip pull-up, in which your palms face each other. So when aiming to build a thicker mid-back, throw a pronated grip into your pull-up routine. It's commonly believed that a very wide grip pull-up is needed to build a wide back, assuming that wide equals wide. But research on this topic says otherwise. This 2014 study had 15 men perform 6 representative max in the lat pull-down with narrow, medium, and wide grips at 1, 1 1.5, and 2 times shoulder width. There was similar muscle activation between grip widths for lats. Therefore, with similar muscle activation at the various grips, lifters can expect similar gains with a grip width of 1 to 2 times shoulder width. With that said, we would recommend the grip you prefer, starting slightly wider than shoulder width apart. However, there's no need to go very wide, especially if you experience shoulder discomfort at that width. Instead, Use a width that works for you and mix up the pull-up variations in your training. Number 4. Standing Dumbbell Overhead Press. The fourth exercise is the Standing Dumbbell Overhead Press. 
The reason we recommend performing this in the standing position is that it engages the core. The reason we recommend dumbbells is it allows for more freedom with the hand position. There's also research showing greater overall muscle activation in the shoulders when done standing with dumbbells. A study conducted in Norway compared muscle activation in barbell and dumbbell shoulder presses performed seated and standing. They found that the overhead press done standing with dumbbells required the greatest stability. This leads to the highest neuromuscular activity of the deltoid muscles. However, this was the exercise with the lowest one representative back strength. While the overhead press with the barbell had a greater one representative max. We're going with dumbbells since the focus is muscle mass. But feel free to mix the barbell and dumbbell overhead press if you're interested in maximizing both strength and size in the shoulders. Number 5. Dips. The fifth and final exercise we'll look at is the dip. The dip is an excellent exercise for building the triceps, which make up a significant portion of the arm. A big benefit of the dip as opposed to isolated tricep exercises is that it also trains the lower part of your chest, which complements the inclined press we discussed earlier. For the dip, instead of leaning forward, maintain a more upright position by staying more upright. Elbow flexion increases, increasing the dip's range of motion. While leaning forward looks cool and can add chest training, the vertical position is better for the triceps in the long run. A common mistake many lifters make with bodyweight exercises is not loading the movement over time. Once you can perform 15 or more bodyweight dips with good form, it's time to use a weighted dip belt or a dumbbell between the legs and train the dip like any other compound lift, which is adding load and training it with various reps. So. There you have it, the top 5 movements we recommend making the foundation of your training. Of course, you can add more exercises to develop your physique further. But by boiling things down to core basics, you'll always know which movements deserve the most attention when it comes to getting jacked. Did you find this video helpful? If so, then hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. By the way, friends, be sure to watch other videos on this channel. Links are on the screen right now.